Howdy everyone and welcome back to The More You Grow. So something I've been questioned about a lot is how we get so many big, beautiful Boston ferns in our greenhouse every year. Well, I wanna talk about in this video how you can get really healthy Boston ferns and how you can actually propagate uh, more Boston ferns yourself for no cost at all. It's very easy to do and there's a couple ways that we can do it that we're gonna talk about today. So we'll talk about that and I'll kind of talk about what you can do to really get these Boston ferns looking nice. So let's go check it out. So let's talk a little bit about caring for Boston ferns to keep them looking the healthiest. So the first thing that I always mention to people is water. Boston ferns love water. They don't like to be standing in water, don't get me wrong there. Don't make it where they're waterlogged. You gotta have good drainage in the pot that you have and in the soil, but they love frequent water. So I water mine at home maybe once or twice a day if I can. That way it has good drainage, goes through, but it doesn't stand in there, but they like the frequent water. So in the greenhouse here, they get watered, I think every morning for about 30 minutes with just the overhead misters, but they do not mind being watered. It's really hard to overwater these plants as long as you have good drainage. If you have poor drainage or your pot doesn't have holes, you're gonna see some issues. So make sure it's got good holes in the pot that you're using. Make sure that that soil is draining well. The next tip I have for you for getting the most beautiful Boston ferns is lighting. Most of the time people don't understand the lighting of ferns as well as they need to. Ferns are an understory plant, meaning that they grow underneath tree canopies and the forest floor of where they live in most cases. Boston ferns are no exception to that. They really, really like morning light or late afternoon light. They do not like the really intense hot uh, sunlight. So do not put them in really direct, intense light or they're gonna start burning on the leaves. That's something that they don't like all that well. So make sure you give them a good location where they get plenty of light, but they are not getting the intense noonday sun or late at, or the afternoon sun that's gonna be hot and burn the leaves. So shade during that time of the day, good morning light is the best way to get, do that. So if you got a porch or a good window that faces east to where you get that good morning light, perfect for the Boston ferns. They're gonna absolutely love that. Okay, my third tip for you on getting beautiful, healthy Boston ferns is get a good fertilizer schedule. These are some heavy feeding plants. The way I do mine here in the greenhouse the, the keep, that keeps them looking so nice like this is when I plant them, I give them a good slow release fertilizer, a complete fertilizer, meaning that it has equal parts, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. I would say like a triple 10 maybe. So 10 nitrogen, 10 phosphorus, 10 potassium. I put that in there when I plant them. But once they're good and established and this size, or even a little bit smaller, I start going with a liquid nitrogen schedule as well. So every two weeks, I will water them with a liquid nitrogen. That's all, nothing else in it, just a liquid nitrogen. I give them a water with that every two weeks and that keeps them beautiful and green. Plants that are grown for foliage, like these Boston ferns, are heavy nitrogen feeders. All that nitrogen goes into keeping the leaves green and lush and beautiful like this. So every two weeks, I give them some form of liquid nitrogen as I water them down. So you can use the synthetic kinds. I've used that before. I actually use that now, right now. I've also used um, fish emulsion. That works really well if you use a diluted fish emulsion. So the only reason I don't use that for the ones we grow here in the greenhouse is because the fish emulsion kind of makes it smell like a lake or a minnow bucket. That's not that bad to me, but a lot of people don't like that smell. So I try to avoid that when we're growing ferns for other people. So just a good nitrogen schedule is the way to go with keeping them nice and lush as time goes on. Okay, the last tip that I have for you on making sure you have good, healthy Boston ferns is make sure that they do not get root bound. They will grow very big, very fast, take up all the space in the pot, give very root bound. And the problem with that is, is that when you water, the water runs down the sides of the pot rather than infiltrating the roots. 
Most people think that, oh, I'm watering my plant. It's looking great. Water, it must be watered enough because water's running out the bottom of the pot. But if it's root bound, none of that water is getting into the roots. It's running down between the plant and the pot. And so it's making you think it's watered when it's really not. So every so often when the plant gets really, really big and the pot gets really, really packed, they need to be divided. And that's what I'm gonna talk about next is how to divide Boston ferns where you get more ferns and then how you can propagate more a different way as well. So let's go talk about how you can get your own Boston ferns with no cost to you. So I wanna show you here. So let's talk about when and how to propagate your Boston fern. So as far as when, you're gonna look for these pots when they're like way too full. You can see here in this one, this is very much a root bound Boston fern. There's like no space in the pot anymore, it's starting to grow out the sides. The pot feels very tight because all those roots are just pushing up against it. This is very much a root bound fern. As you can see, it's not as healthy as the others. It's alive, but it's not thriving by any means. And it feels very dry too. The reason why it feels very dry, like I mentioned before, because even though this gets watered every day, none of the water can get down through the roots. They're so packed together that it makes like an impenetrable wall that no, none of the water can infiltrate into the middle with. Okay, so I've taken the pot off and you can see this plant is way, way root bound. That is not a good sign in most cases. I know how to fix this. I'll show you kind of how to fix this. I'll also show you how we can divide this and also get more ferns. So what you would do at this point, if you had this fern and it's way root bound like this, you'll want to go through and kind of rake these roots, kind of dislodge these roots, kind of go through, I kind of go with a pocket knife or something that I can scratch with, and I scratch and tease these roots out from the edge. And if you were wanting to divide this, it's very, very simple. All you have to do is look at the kind of natural division of the pot. The way I would do it is um, I would kind of go down the middle here. I'll show you a little bit closer up and talk about that. You can see there's kind of a natural division to this fern already. So I would kind of go through here, kind of along the line of where my finger is. And I would just take something like a saw or a big bread knife and just cut all the way down, just like you're cutting a slice of cake or if you're chopping something in half. I would take it in half like that, and then all we'd have to do is put it in its own pot, each half in its own pot centered in the middle of a bigger pot. And those will eventually fill back in and make it to where you will have now two large ferns. But another way that you can propagate these ferns other than just division is by tubers. This is how I actually get the majority of the uh, ferns in this greenhouse. So you see here on the side, there are these little potato looking, looking structures. And that right there will grow a whole new fern. I'll show you how I get these planted up and kind of what you can expect from them next here. So let's talk a little bit about how to divide the tubers that I showed you. I want to show you this. This was just a few seconds of picking tubers. I only picked a few off the outside. You could dig down and get more on the inside, but I found it's mostly easy on a root bound plant just to get the outside ones. And let me show you, this is on a small fern. I've got probably, let's see, four, eight, 12, about 15 tubers here, just from a very, very small fern, just on the outside edge. And show you these up close a little bit again. This is the tuber, and I wanna show you where the plant is coming from so you know how to plant it. So right here on the end, there's a little point. You can see that little kind of point there. That is where the plant is gonna come from. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these into little four inch pots for now so we're not using too much soil. The way I like to do that is I like to lay them sideways like this with that point sticking up. So that way you get good surface area but that the little plant will grow up and not be hindered by the soil or being turned upside down. So it's very, very easy at this point. Just have some four inch pots here. And I'm just gonna put these about 
an inch to an inch and a half deep, making sure they're just good and covered with moist potting mix. There's nothing special about this potting mix, guys. It's just very simple, very easy potting mix. So all I'm doing is I'm just looking for the little point, planting it sideways like that, and putting it down in some damp potting mix. So I'm only gonna do a handful of them today. And one good thing about these, if you get more than what you can plant in a day or that you feel like planting in a day, just get an extra pot, fill it with some moist potting mix, put these down in here to keep them from drying out and they will stay there for a long time. Sometimes they'll even start to sprout. I'll show you an example of that here in a minute and then you can take them out as already started plants and put them in their own pots. So planting these tubers are very, very easy. If you want larger ferns, again, just divide them and they will get fuller faster. But if you're wanting to grow a lot of ferns, this is the way to go. You can plant at least probably 20, 30 of these tubers for a good size fern. And even more if you want to dig in further. I planted one in each of these four inch pots and after about three or four months, they are slow growing. That is one of the drawbacks to it. But after a few months, you get something like this. This is a tray of four inch pots and look what you get. You get these small Boston ferns that you can now transplant into something bigger. You could transplant this in its own pot and it will fill in eventually. One thing I like to do though, I always start our hanging baskets from these small ferns. If I want big ones, I divide them. But if I want these smaller, hanging basket ferns that people can hang on their porches or anything like that. What I do is I put three, three of these, I put three of these into one pot and it fills in very, very fast and looks like one large fern at this point. So that's my trick to looking, making these ferns look bigger, faster, is that I plant multiple in a pot so they will fill in quicker. So really guys, that's all there is to it. It's a very easy process to grow Boston ferns. You can either divide them and get something that is like this. This is one that I divided rather than from tubers. And look how full it is very quickly. This is probably about a month of growth after division. So it is filled in very, very quickly. So you can either divide them or you can plant them from the tubers that are on the side of the pot. Get something like this. You can grow a ton of these small ferns. This is something that y'all could do as a business, guys. You could actually be able to plant these in hanging baskets like I've done back here and sell them for a little bit of profit. The reason why I'm not concerned with sharing this with you, not like I'm gonna run myself out of business here, is because they do take time. Most people are not willing to invest the time in growing these. So if you have time and patience, this could be a very fun project for you to do that can earn you a little bit of revenue. So if you like this video, guys, hit that like button. If you have any more questions for me on uh, caring for or propagating your own Boston ferns, leave it down in the comments and I'll try to answer that to the best of my abilities. If you haven't done so yet, be sure to go uh, check us out on Facebook and Instagram and hit that bell icon for notifications. And until next time, hope you'll join me right here on The More You Grow.